Hello, welcome to Valve Channel, I'm Stephen. Today I'm going to uh, disassembling a ball valve for you to understand what is ball valve and uh, how the ball valve is going to work, how to seal the pressure inside the flow control system. This ball valve is a metal seed ball valve and also it is two-piece metal seed ball valve. It uses two-piece valve body to hold the ball inside the valve body and we use the valve stand to control the ball to open and close. We can use a handle to open and close the ball. This ball valve, the material is 316L, that is one kind of stainless steel. And uh, also it is low carbon, L means low, low carbon stainless steel, that is very good material for the corrosive flow medium. The valve size is DN50, that equal 2 inch. And the valve pressure is PN16, that equal almost 115 pressure class. So let's look at this ball valve from the outside first. First, let's look at the top of this valve body. This is the valve stem. The valve stem we're going to control the ball to open and close the valve. And one thing are very important, we can see we already produced a line on the top of the valve stem. This line is a symbol for the user to distinguish the ball valve is in the open position or in the closed position. If the line are perpendicular with the pipeline, so that means now this ball valve is closed. So we can see now the ball valve, the ball already sees the pressure inside the flow control system. The flow median cannot transfer the valve. And also if we're turning the valve stand, use a handle to 19 degree. So now this line are parallel with the pipeline. So that means now the valve is open. So we can see now the valve is open. The flow median can transfer the valve flow to another side. So that is a function for this line. And also one thing are very important, when you're going to use a handle to control a ball valve, if you fix the handle on the top of the valve body, use a spring ring to lock the handle. You must lock the handle. The handle must be parallel with the line. Because if you use a handle to control a ball valve, the handle will become the symbol to tell the user the valve is open or the valve is closed. If we use a handle to control the ball valve to open or to close, we will put a special shape of washer on the valve stem. This washer has two functions. One is going to locating the position of the valve stand when it's going to turn it. For example, when we're going to turn it, the ball valve, use this handle. We are going to turn in the valve stand to 19 degree to open the ball valve. So the washer will stop the valve stand continuing to turn it. So the flange hole will exactly match the valve ball's hole. The flow media can transfer the valve inside and to another side. So that is the first function for the special shape of the washer. And another function is if you want to lock the valve in one position, you can use a locker to lock the valve by the washer's hole and the valve body's hole. We are going to use a locker to lock the valve. So the valve will be locked by one position. So that is a two function for this special shape of the washer. And beside the washer, it has two nut. This two nut function is going to tie the parking gland. The parking gland will going to push the parking between the valve stand and the valve body. It will going to seal the pressure inside the valve body. So next, uh, I'm going to loose the two nut and uh, disassembling this special shape of washer. So now I can take out the washer. The washer have two functions. One is going to locating the valve stand and also locating the ball to turn in the right position to open or to close the valve. And also the hole are located on the washer can lock the valve stand by the hole located on the valve body. We can use the locker to lock the washer and also lock the valve stand to make the valve be locked in the open position or in the closed position. And then we can take out the parking gland. 
So this is a parking gland. The parking gland we're going to push to tie the parking between the valve stand and the valve body. So the pressure cannot release by the gap between the valve stand and the valve body. Because when we're going to use the valve, we are going to turn the valve stand very frequently. So sometimes the valve stand can grinding, can scratch the parking ground. So many factory sometimes will use a PTF ring, PTFE ring fixed inside the parking gland. So the PTFE ring will going to lubricate between the valve stand and the parking gland. So when we're going to turn the valve stand, the valve stand will not grinding the parking gland. So the PTFE ring will protect the parking gland and also protect the valve stand. So that is a function for this PTFE ring which located inside the parking gland. So now we can see the parking are located between the valve stand and the valve body. The first one is a PTFE ring. This valve is a metal seat ball valve. So it was going to use in high temperature environment. So it is impossible to use PTFE parking to suit the pressure. So this PTFE ring just as a just going to protect the real parking behind this ring. So this is just a washer. And then we can see the real parking are located between the valve stand and the valve body. This parking is made by graphic, so it can hold very high temperature flow medium. And also except uh, this two hole for the parking gland. And also we have another four thread hole are located on the valve body. This four thread hole are function for the actuator. Except uh, use a handle to control the valve. We also can use an actuator to control the valve, to turn in the valve stand to open or to close the valve. So this four hole, thread hole is for mounting the actuator on the top of the valve body. Next I'm going to disassembling the ball valve by two pieces of the valve body and take out the ball from inside the valve body. Because ball valve's ball are all has a slot. This slot will cooperate with the valve stand. The valve stand will use this slot to open and close the valve. To make the ball are easier to take out from inside of the valve body, we need to make sure this slot are parallel with the pipeline. So we were going to close the valve first and then to disassembling the two pieces of the valve body. To make sure the valve are closed in the right position, we need to make sure the valve stand, this line, are perpendicular with the pipe line. So now the valve is closed in the right position. So next uh, we can loose this four nut and take out the right side of the valve body and then we can take out the ball from inside of the valve body. Now I already take out the four nut from the valve body. And also we can see here has an error which casting on the valve body. So that means this ball valve is single direction ball valve. When we're going to mount this ball valve in the flow control system, this side must going to connect with the upstream. And this side will going to connect with the downstream. And also this ball valve is a floating ball valve. So most of the time, the floating ball valve, the valve seat, the upstream side will have a spring to push the ball. And also the pressure will push the ball together with the spring to let the ball touch the downstream side valve seat to seal the pressure from the downstream side valve seat. So let's look at the inside of this ball valve. Does this side have a spring? And also this side will going to seal the pressure inside the flow control system. So now I'm going to take out the right side of the valve body to see what does the valve seat and the valve ball look like. So this is the right side of the valve body and also we can see the valve seat are located inside the valve body. And this is the ball which is located in the valve body. The valve stand we're going to control the ball to open or to close the valve. 
So that is the basic principle for a ball valve. So first, let's look at uh, the upstream side of the valve seat. Because this is a floating ball valve. Floating ball valve. So the upstream side will have spring to push the ball, to touch the downside of the valve seat to seal the pressure. And also, most of the time, the floating ball valve, only the downstream side of the valve seat will seal the pressure inside the flow control system. So the upstream side behind the valve seat, it has a spring. So we can see here is the upstream side of the valve seat look like. And uh, behind the valve seat, it has a leaf spring. This leaf spring was going to push the valve seat. And the valve seat was going to push the ball. Push the ball. The ball was going to push the downstream side of the valve seat to seal the pressure inside the flow control system. So next, uh, let's look at uh, the valve ball and the downstream side of the valve seat. Next, I'm going to take out the ball from the valve body. Let's see what does the ball valve ball look like. This is the ball from the ball valve's body. This one is the most uh, difficult mechanical component to produce in ball valve industry. And one thing I'm very interesting, this ball valve, this slot for the valve stand, it has a little hole in the center of the slot. This hole is for the cavity pressure to relieve. So that means this kind of ball valve can work in low temperature flow control system. If the cavity have the pressure or cavity have very sensitive flow media inside, if the outside temperature going to change, the inside the cavities, flow media and pressure are also going to change. So it may break the valve body. So that will be very dangerous if the valve body is closed. So this hole is going to protect that kind of thing happened. If the cavity have pressure, the pressure will be relieved from the hole to the public. So this hole is for the pressure to relieve. And this slot will going to cooperate with the valve stand to open or to close the valve. So this is the ball from the valve body. And next, uh, let's look at uh, what does the downstream side of the valve seat look like. So next, uh, let's take out uh, the downstream side of the valve seat to compare with the upstream side of the valve seat. To look at uh, two valve seat, the difference between two valve seat. So this one is the downstream side of the valve seat. This one is upstream side of the valve seat. Because this valve is floating ball valve, so upstream side valve seat, it has spring to push the ball to touch the downstream side of the valve seat to see the pressure inside the flow control system. And also, the upstream side don't need to care about the median to floating between the valve seat and the valve body. So it just use the O-ring to seal the pressure between the valve seat and the valve body. So if this kind of valve working in a high temperature environment, the O-ring will be destroyed. But actually it doesn't matter because the downstream side of the valve seat will going to seal the pressure. And the downstream side of the valve seat, the gap between the valve seat and the valve body, it will going to use a graphic ring to seal the pressure. The graphic ring still sticky inside the valve body. It is very difficult to take out, except uh, you're going to break the graphic ring. So the graphic ring can work in high temperature environment. So it will be never destroyed by high temperature. So floating ball valve, only the downstream side of the valve seat were going to seal the pressure inside the flow control system. So that is the difference between the upstream side of the valve seat and the downstream side of the valve seat. Next, I'm going to take out the valve stand to look at what does a ball valve valve stand look like. A ball valve valve stand will go into assembling from the inside of the valve body cavity because the valve body cavity, it has pressure. If we're mounting this valve stand from the outside of the valve body, if the cavity has pressure, the pressure may push the valve stand, fly out of the valve body. So it will be a very dangerous situation. So we are going to mounting the ball valve from the inside of the valve body. 
So if the cavity have pressure, the cavity pressure cannot push the valve stem fly out of the valve body. So the dangerous situation will never gonna happen. So we were going to take out the valve stem from the inside of the valve body cavity. So this is the ball valve valve stem. It was going to cooperate with the ball to close the valve or to open the valve. So that is the basic principle for the how the valve stand going to control the ball valve ball to open or to close the valve. And also because the valve stand was going to open and close very frequently, so we were going to protect the ball valve, valve stand and the valve body. Because the valve stand will always touch the valve body. So we were going to use this kind of PTFE ring to lubricate the step with the valve body. So the valve stand step was not going to scratch the valve body. So it was going to protect the valve body and protect the valve stand. So that is the basic principle for the valve stand and how the ball valve, valve stand look like. And the last step, we're going to take out the packing from the inside of the valve body. The packing, we're going to seal the pressure between the valve stand and the valve body. So this is the packing look like. So the packing will be pushed by the packing gland. The packing gland, we're going to push the packing to tie the packing inside the valve body to seal the pressure between the valve stand and the valve body. So now we're already disassembling all the mechanical component inside a ball valve. And also are very important every time I talk about the ball valve. If the ball valve are mounted an actuator on the top of the valve body, never put your finger inside the valve body because that will be very, very dangerous movement. The ball even can cut your finger. So that is very dangerous. So never put your hand inside a valve body when the valve mounting actuator on the top of the valve body. So thank you for watching. See you next video. Bye bye.